All right, welcome to the weekly review, March 10th, 2024, where we go over index futures, bonds, and currencies. And as always, I'm gonna go over last week's price action, and I'm gonna go over what's to come in the future. So stick along if you're interested in these three financial markets, and let's get into it. All right, so we are looking at the S&P 500, the weekly chart, and we have been bullish and this week we kind of had a indecisive week a little bearish we did close a little bit lower than what we opened but like i've been saying for the last couple of weeks now i am not picking a top in this market until it proves that it wants to actually go lower and what's that going to take some type of shift in market structure and a change in the state of delivery on the daily chart and then we can see if it wants to go through this weekly order block then we have some imbalances here and imbalances here so we are in march so we are wrapping up q1 right now so there is a potential that we can see some type of quarterly shift and have a bearish uh q2 or at least a bearish first half to q2 but i am not picking a top until it proves that it wants to top so until then i am bullish on the s p 500 not really too much on the weekly chart to go off of. So we're going to go to the daily chart. So looking at the daily chart, we had NFP on this day on Friday and we had a bearish day, but you can see Wednesday and Thursday was bullish. We've made all time highs again. So what is it going to take for it to be bearish and get below these lows and probably into this volume imbalance? And then we'll see the reaction once we get there. Well, we would need to see price close below this level right here which is mean threshold of this potential bullish order block so we had these two down close candles we had a bullish run on wednesday and thursday so this is tuesday's price action and we have the mean threshold which is the halfway point of the entire candle if price was to close below that then i would feel pretty strongly that we're going to go for these lows and trade into this um volume imbalance so we do have the fair value gap but the fact that we have this gap right here, I would like to see ES reach into that gap. And then we'll see the reaction. Do we trade through it, come back up to it, use it as some type of like resistance and then continue lower. We have a gap here. The reason why I'm looking at this gap is because, let me draw it out real quick. So we came back into the gap here on February 13th, but if you notice, we've never had bodies trade into the gap. so. If we do trade through this, then I want to see the reaction inside this gap because we never had any bodies trade to it. So we can see some type of um, quarterly shift potentially happening, but it all doesn't start until we trade through from an intermediate term basis. Now, obviously, you can scalp and potentially day trade some shorts, but if you are doing anything longer than that, then you need to see it price close below this halfway point of this entire candle and then the next target would be this volume balance and then most likely this volume balance because we haven't seen any bodies trade through it so remember the idea of a volume imbalance is that the bodies never touch we never had any action with the body so we need to make this market efficient or the algorithm is more likely to make the market efficient by having some bodies trade through it to have more volume that's why it's called a volume imbalance and then we'll see how this down close candle holds up and then we have some balances here we have this consolidation so we have a lot of liquidity here so got a long ways to go before we get to any of that so for right now we are just looking at mean threshold and these lows to see what happens. But until we close through that, I am still long term bullish on the S&P 500. So let's go to a four hour chart. So you can see we had a pretty, um, pretty good drop after NFP. So NFP sent us higher a little bit. Usually that's what NFP does. The first move is kind of like a fake out. And then after 930, we kind of have the real move of the day. So 8.30, we had a little bit of a whipsaw right here, and then price went higher, and then at 10 o'clock, we tanked. And we had some type of rebalance in the afternoon session. So we're going to see how we open up going into next week and how Monday and Tuesday trade and how this um, mean threshold holds up. Now, there isn't any imbalance that lines up directly with mean threshold, so we have this imbalance here with that order block. So what I, I would be keying 
and this is how you kind of take your higher time frame key levels and you work your way down and refine them so remember that this green dotted line i'm gonna make it thicker but this green dotted line was the daily mean threshold so now we want to focus on the four hour mean threshold right here so let's make that a little bit thinner so we have the thicker line and the thinner line the thinner line is the four hour one so really if we close below that four hour one we're probably going to go lower so this is how you refine your key levels on smaller time frames but as always with these um charts i'm not going to really go too deep into like 15 and 5 minute charts but we are going to go over the hourly chart just to go over last week's price action so let me take this off all these colors so basically you can see monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday so it was nfp week so basically we had monday which was light on news there wasn't too much news on monday so you kind of saw that we consolidated pretty much all day monday and then we had some movement overnight going into london and then tuesday was pretty much a one-sided day we were pretty much bearish the entire day we made the low of the day in the three o'clock hour and we were probing last week's lows but we did not take it out which also gives a little bit of confidence that we could go lower because we left all this sell side liquidity for potentially next week remember the algorithm knows what's going to happen next week so all this stuff is engineered and yeah i'm not going to speak too much on that so looking after tuesday we rallied up we have this order block right here so we have this order block right here we come back into it late wednesday but remember it's all about time and price so we hit it at nine o'clock that doesn't really matter that's not a significant time so then we're going to come back into it during london session 3 a.m and that's more significant and then the thursday the day before nfp is a wild card day many times you'll see days like this where it's just one-sided and just rips and runs and that's just why i don't like the trade wednesday thursday friday before nfp but um you can still get good insight reviewing the price action so thursday london we hit it and we just rally all the way up and we end up making an all-time high pretty quickly and then we consolidate we drop down one more time for nfp we take out that low right here that we had in the pm session and then we rally one one more time higher for your manipulation move and then we drop so we drop and we have a intermediate term low because it's still within this fair value gap right so we have a shift in market structure we have a fair value gap we have a small balance price range so we could see price go above let me change the preset so this black dotted line or actually let me change it to equilibrium this is equilibrium we have the low and high so we can see monday or tuesday early in the week kind of trade higher come back into this balanced price range or maybe this fair value gap and then do we have some type of confirmation on lower time frames to take us into this sell side liquidity or do we just take out this low real quick we have inefficiencies right here monday tuesday and then we just rally higher and continue to make new highs or do we just rip through it right away so like i said i'm still bullish long term until i get some more confirmation that we may be there so like i was saying before you can scalp so let's say the scenario one happens and we trade higher and we go into this balanced price range and this fair value gap and then on the five minute chart one chart we see some type of bearish market maker sell model so you can scalp that day trade that but from a longer term perspective anything over a week i wouldn't feel comfortable holding a short yet until we close below mean threshold for anything over a week and that is it for stock in the sea so let's go over to bonds so looking at bonds we got a couple lines these are from the daily chart but basically from the weekly perspective we traded into this fair value gap we came down all the way and we fell just short of this fair value gap so if you remember a couple weeks ago i was looking to see price go a little bit deeper and we had consequent encroachment of that but we did not have that and we've had three bullish weeks in a row and right now what i was looking at was mean threshold of this entire candle so this was like a bearish order block or repul propulsion block and i took the entire halfway point and i ideally don't want to see price close above that if we do then we're probably bullish and 
we're probably going to go for these highs up here or consolidate that's always an option but you can see we had like a nice little reaction there and if we go down to a daily chart we can see at that mean threshold point we had some type of imbalance on the daily chart so ideally i don't want to see price go any higher than thursday's high for bonds that doesn't exclusively rule out the bearishness in bonds but ideally if we're bearish i would hope thursday made the high and we continue lower um i am looking for bearish prices on bonds though i am not looking for bullish prices yet for me to look for bullish prices we need to one close through that mean threshold and close through mean threshold of this entire daily candle so that's what i'm looking at for bonds i am bearish on bonds which would ideally um coincide with stocks going lower and dollar going higher so if we are going to see lower stock indices then this would support the idea with bonds as well and starting to see some more market symmetry as we haven't seen too much symmetry to start this year in q1 but that's pretty much it for the daily chart there's really not too much on the lower time frames for bonds and we're gonna go actually let's go over last week's price action real quick so we had a pretty much one-sided week and that's the cool thing about bonds is that when it trends it trends and it usually trends often it doesn't consolidate too much and it likes to stay in one direction for a good amount of time so looking at monday we did have a little consolidation on monday because there was no news that day however we were just rebalancing this or not rebalancing but repricing to this fair value gap and then we go above the fair value gap once we close above my bad once we close above the down close candles we tap into a little bit just because of time and price and then we rally up higher and then we have this close candle right here wow i don't know what's happening so we have this up close candle right here you see we create the fair value gap we come back into it for the market maker buy model and we continue higher so if we take our standard deviation from this low to this high and we measure the standard deviations with the bodies and the wicks so the bodies i'm going to make red and the wicks is going to stay blue you can see that with the wick we have this one right here which is right around the mean threshold level so if i put that as a target let's make it that color let's make it two so boom and then you can see the reaction that we had right there so we hit the target boom we come back we trade up into the mean threshold from that weekly chart and you can see the reaction that we had which is pretty nice and why did i pick this well if this was the smart money reversal within the entire market maker buy model then you want to measure from the breaker so from the fulcrum point so we went high low and then we started the market maker buy model so i'm going to take my standard deviations from that breaker right there measure it up and look for confluences with key levels so then if you look more to the left we have this big fair value gap right here that we actually did not trade up into so that's the only thing that is not lining up perfectly is that we didn't trade up into this fair value gap but that can just be a um a breakaway gap if that's the case so we'll see what happens I ideally, like I said, but want to see bonds trade lower, but it could go for that low resistance liquidity run and go up into this four hour balance price range from up here. This balance price range right here, it can go up into that, into these standard deviations, and then maybe we see some type of sell off. So we'll see what happens with bonds. Um, we're playing it close. We could have a breakaway gap here or a breakaway gap from there. And like I said, once again, I ideally want to see bonds go lower and see stock indices trade lower. But until that happens, you have to stay bullish on both. So went over last week's price action. And now let's go over to the dollar index. So now looking at the dollar, ignore these boxes for a minute. I'm just going to show you the weekly chart real quick, just to show you what liquidity we're in between. So we're in between this high and this low, and we've just been ranging since, um, july of 2023 pretty much between that high and low so that's really it on the weekly chart we did trade into this fair value gap 
and we were coming off of this fair value gap here so let's go, drop down to the daily chart so you can see what these boxes were so if you remember from last week's video i was trying to show the idea that this could potentially be a smart money reversal low risk buy first stage accumulation and that we were potentially within second stage accumulation inside of why is it not working inside of this reclaimed order block i was saying that make it green i was saying that could be around this time that we can see some type of bullishness and go for low resistance liquidity run and go for that that was the gun to my head choice i was also trying to tell you guys that the dollar is 50 50 it could go either way and when you are in that situation you can see i was wrong we had some pretty good um expansion to the downside with nfp and we traded outside of that reclaimed order block and we traded outside of or below this low right here so are we going to continue lower Eh, we could but then that wouldn't be conducive with bonds going lower or stock indices going lower so it's kind of like the same thing i was saying before long term you kind of have to stay bearish on dollar especially after this and bullish on bonds and stock indices until proven otherwise what would prove otherwise in terms of dollar is if we trade above this down close candle right here so if we are able to close above the body again that would be kind of like a reclaimed order block and we go higher but price action does not support that idea as of now it supports more bearishness and if we are to close below this low on monday let's say mondays or tuesday any day then this would become a breaker let's make it red it will become a breaker and then now we have breaker fair value gaps and we can go lower but for now we have this what was a reclaimed order block is now a reclaimed mitigation block so we have an uh, imbalance there and we want to see what happens there so long term on dollar i am switching back to being more bearish given what nfp did and let's go to the hourly chart and if we're looking at the week we consolidated monday we had kind of a little, little bit of a drop on tuesday but we came back up into that and then wednesday thursday was just very heavy one-sided and just dropped we close outside of that reclaimed order block. We come back into it and then we just continue to just melt, not giving too many retracements, giving time for people to get in short, um, which is typically conducive with a manipulation run. So we'll see what happens, man. There's a lot of reasons to be short and there's a lot of reasons to be long in all the markets except stock indices. There's really no reason to be short as of yet. But there's reason to be long and short in both. So usually when you are in times where it's not clear, you kind of want to just sit on your hands. We're wrapping up Q1 right now. So we want to see how does Q2 start? What's the sentiment? If you're trading more long term now for scalping and all that, you can get in scalp long, short in the same day. So when I do these weekly analysis, it's not necessarily for my scalpers it's for the day traders, but it's really for the short term and long term traders. So. If you are, like I said, trading more long term, you just have to wait and see how Q2 starts to shake out and then you can make your your play for that quarter. But that's it for the market review. I hope you guys found it insightful and I'll continue to drop information and content like this for you guys in the future. Until then, I'll see you guys.